There's a new term that's going to be really important later in the book, and so it's worth really pausing and understanding what this means from a mathematical point of view and what the physical interpretation or implication is going to be. And the word is Hermitian. And the idea is that we're going to talk about a property that some matrices have of being Hermitian. And so we have to define some things. So first is we have to be able to know what the Hermitian adjoint of an operator is. And again, I'm saying operator because it's quantum mechanics, but it's a matrix. And what you do to create the Hermitian adjoint of a matrix is transpose it and conjugate it. So transpose is effectively flip the, the rows and columns. Conjugate means complex conjugate. So every time there's an I, it's now an, a negative I. And so let me just do a quick example. So let's say that A is equal to 0, 1, 2, 1, I, I, negative I, 0, 0. So to get the Hermitian adjoint, or A dagger, it has this kind of little cross sign. So A dagger, we need to rotate and take the complex conjugate. So it's easy as long as it's uh, a real number. So this now goes 0, 1, 2, 1, this becomes negative i, and then this becomes negative i, and then this is going to become positive i, 0, 0. So it's kind of like a rotation along the diagonal, and then i's become negative i's. So now, if the matrix is equal to its own Hermitian adjoint, then we say that the matrix is Hermitian. So Hermitian adjoint is like um, an operation, is a thing you can do to matrices, if it's a square matrix. But then Hermitian is a property that some matrices have. So we can ask the question, is this equal, are these two things equal? N no, obviously these are different. So we would say that A is not Hermitian. That's okay. Um, there are a few interesting things that would happen if it is Hermitian. One is just thinking about properties of if we're working back and forth, like if we flip our, our bras and our kets, we know how those transform. And in fact, if you on one side had the transpose and on the other side had the complex conjugate, and these are equal, that's also being Hermitian. This is something you might occasionally see. Um, I'm, I can't quite think of when we might use it, but occasionally things like this will happen where we're just thinking about acting to the left versus acting to the right. Um, but there's a couple of physical things that result. So just asking are these equal or not, that's mathematical. So if A is Hermitian, then A has real eigenvalues. So I'm going to use lambda, meaning just eigenvalues. And then the eigenvectors, so our set of, of eigenvectors, which I can denote this way, are going to be complete. So that's really helpful because that means it spans the space. And the real observables is nice because this means that this is going to correspond to measurement. So observable, right? I can observe two apples. I can't observe I apples. That's one way to kind of just remember this. So we will encounter operators. We will encounter matrices in this class that are not Hermitian. They still might be useful, but they're not actually going to be um, result in, in measurements. They're not going to represent a real observable. So get used to this. It's going to be something pretty important later on, but for now it's just kind of a mathematical term to, to learn.